Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, feeling well, and having a fantastic start to your day and a great ending to your work week, start to your weekend, whenever you may be watching this. Got you an update on what's going to happen weather-wise potentially for today, and we're expecting another day of severe weather. Texas kind of took a break yesterday, but today it'll ramp up again. Kind of the same areas as Wednesday, large hail threat, very large hail threats. An isolated tornado threat and the chances for damaging winds have certainly increased. We're going to have another day of active weather in Florida again. Not expecting it to be as active as it been as as it has been over the last two days. We had kind of a regional tornado outbreak in the Panhandle of Florida yesterday. At least two to three tornadoes are definitely confirmed, and we'll see how strong they um, were as uh, the survey team from the National Weather Service will, I'm sure, get out there today and survey the damage. But, you know, tonight we'll discuss what's going forward, too, because I'm still watching tomorrow, which has increased for severe weather. And then I think Sunday has a chance to increase, too. Right now, just a marginal risk for severe weather for our Sunday, which we kind of talked on last night that I think has a high ceiling kind of scenario to it. So we'll definitely discuss that. But with that being said, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. Let's get rolling. Wider Vapor Loop shows kind of what's going on pretty well. Pieces of energy kind of flying through. You got a lot of heavy rain. Uh, there will be a little bit of a flash flooding a threat in the mid-Atlantic region, like the Washington, D.C., Baltimore region, and there's a lot of heavy rain moving in. Some areas that's already been raining, this morning and then we'll continue to move in depending on where you are throughout the late morning hours into the afternoon hours and then we got this upper trough digging here this is a big dip right here and energy has flown kind of down the spine of the rocky mountains dug down and this energy will help spark the initiation of some very strong storms in north texas even central texas maybe even the hill country of texas a little bit later today this same energy will eventually dive down here promote an environment for severe weather again in the gulf coast again for tomorrow and then for sunday that same energy low pressure will develop deepen and will cause a strong wind risk along the eastern u.s the i-95 corridor could get very active and we will have a severe weather risk also for sunday that could increase as a high ceiling Confidence is just not high at all on what's going to happen. I've had a couple people locally ask me about the Carolinas. What is it going to do Sunday? Truthfully, guys, I am not sure, but we're going to figure it out for you guys. So, But today, Storm Prediction Center, you got an enhanced risk. It's, it's broadened because the wind risk, uh, the risk of damaging winds has increased, but you got a pretty large enhanced risk. This is larger than two days ago. It does include Dallas, just north of Dallas, all the way down to San Antonio, it includes Austin, Waco, and then a slight risk, which basically stretches just north of the Texas-Oklahoma border into southern Oklahoma and pretty much covers all of central, east central Texas, all the way to southern areas of Texas. Then you got the marginal risk today, of a severe weather that has not really changed level one out of five stretches from southeast ohio all the way down to portions a large portion of florida so tornado risk today in fact let's go on and not do that because we're going to zone into some of these areas but flash flooding risk and stick with me that's not i didn't skip the risk criteria i just want to focus in on it when we talk about that specific region so flash flooding risk you, you do got a chance of some heavy rain in this region with just these strong storms that do form but definitely watching this risk over here you got a slight risk of flash flood guidance being met as at least a 15 percent risk of that crisis criteria being met where well, I think between now and the next 24 hours you can get two to three inches of rain that could fall it's already fallen in some of these areas uh, so you could get more rain throughout the morning hours so some of this could be quite heavy and this is right over the Washington DC area central Maryland regions so let's go on and talk about the severe weather risk we'll cover this first there's an enhanced risk and like I said kind of already covered this this part but it goes right all the way pretty much to the hill country of Texas, maybe not fully entrenched into the region, but you're going to have some powerful storms and the enhanced risk. That's a level three out of five, which is the orange you see on your screen. The tornado risk, we didn't get an upgrade with this, but we do have that 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in the given point in this brown area. This kind of includes some of the similar regions 
that were included two days ago. You know, Dallas down to Hillsboro, down to Waco, over to Weatherford, uh, Mineral Wells, and then just you know, just east of the Dallas Fort Worth area, the Greenville. Uh, down over just into the Canton area, places like that. So uh, severe weather is definitely going to happen. It's just the tornado threat is up in the air. And honestly, you know, I was reading the Storm Prediction Center uh, discussion, and they were saying due to the speed of this energy, these supercells could develop into more of a linear threat a lot quicker than, not a lot quicker, but quicker than maybe what they were thinking originally. So that's that's good news because the large hail threat might, it's going to be large regardless, but maybe the window for very, very large hail can shorten a little bit, but then it opens up the opportunity for more of a damaging wind threat as these supercells develop into what we call an MCS, which is a mesoscale convective system, which is basically a fancy term for a uh, powerful line of storms. So hail threat today, not only do you have the 30% risk of hell in one inch or diameter or larger, you also have the 10% risk, which is a zone risk. Remember, that's not 10 plus 30, which makes 40. That's not how this works. It's just a 10% risk of large hell, significant hell, which they consider two inch or diameter or larger. And this extends all the way in, into a large, <clears throat> excuse me, a large portion of the 15% risk. So you have a chance of very large hell down here too, into the Austin area, San Antonio, places like that, all the way into portions of the hill country of Texas. So storms might be a little bit more isolated down here. Somebody, you know, you folks down there might not get a drop of rain, but where storms do fire, they can be quite intense. One thing that has changed is the wind threat. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I apologize for the clearing of the throat. Um, is the damaging wind threat. So you have the 30% risk of winds pushing 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour, mile per hour readings. But you also, in this entire red area, have a 10% risk of significant winds. That's winds at in excess of 65 knots or higher. So that's around 70, 75 miles per hour, right at hurricane force winds. So please take the wind threat serious, especially later in the afternoon when these storms kind of grow upscale and begin to kind of form into a line of storms. This could bow out and really be just a nasty line of storms later into the afternoon to the evening hours. So let's go on and talk about, we're not going to talk about the ingredients building into this. We did that last night. We've been talking about that. We're just going to kind of give you the cut and dry information on how the radar could potentially look later this morning into the afternoon hours. You know, I actually started around 2 p.m. Remember, backed us up one hour. So this is 2 p.m. in central time. You can already see the energy coming in. You got uh, low level moisture. When I say low level moisture, I'm talking about dew points. You got dew points building into the 60s in this area. Chances are you're waking up to dew points in the 50s in North Texas. You're thinking it doesn't feel like severe weather is going to happen today, but you'll notice a change in the atmosphere in North Texas throughout the day. Uh, it'll get more humid. You'll definitely notice it. But bang, you know, this is 2 p.m. This is 3 p.m. You notice this big storm cluster of storms quickly develops. Dallas, Fort Worth right in here, and then you got, make sure we don't jip any location, locations, uh, Weatherford just west of the Fort Worth area and Mineral Wells um, just west of that area, Stephenville uh, just southwest or south of that area, and these storms kind of explode right on top of these regions very quickly. These, these updrafts will build very fast, and there'll be kind of be a nose, almost a triple point, and it will be a triple point. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center says it, and that's basically where your best instability, uh, your best low-level moisture, um, things like that, the best dynamics meet in the middle to call a triple point. So I'll talk a little bit about that in the future when we get a little bit more time, but basically this is basically where some thresholds of some high-end ingredients meet in one spot, and this is basically where they will meet, and that is basically where your best tornado threat's going to be or worst tornado threat's going to be some people try to correct me and they're like why do you why do you use best or worst in certain situations where well i i guess you could view it either either way but this is where your highest tornado threat can potentially be sometime midway in the afternoon i would say right where these storms form right here in north texas and they could form right over the dallas fort worth area they could form just west of the city just southwest just south just north but we got to watch this so this is when your highest tornado threat will be 
around mid afternoon. And then watch you go to, you know, the 4 p.m. time frame. This broadens, becomes a real cluster of storms. You see these pink areas. That's where the HRR model is really trying to pick up on a large hell threat with these storms. But I really think it could be a nasty just before rush hour. Dallas Fort Worth area I hear has notoriously awful traffic. I don't know if it can beat Atlanta, but I can't really speak on Dallas because I've never been there, but I've been through Atlanta many times and the traffic is just terrible all times of the day. It just, oof, I had to say a prayer right when I head up to a traffic jam. It's terrible. Um, but, you know, you get into 4, 5 p.m., and you notice by the time you're at 5 p.m., it's potentially storming around the North Texas region, but you notice these storms kind of eat up all this ingredients, I guess you would say, and then these storms begin to fire up to the south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, down to Waco, uh, you know, down to maybe even Austin, Temple, Hillsboro. These storms get intense down here where there's still a lot of high-end ingredients down here. And then they start to form into that line of storms we talked about. And not only do you have a damaging wind threat, this is around 6 p.m. in this portion of Texas, south of the Dallas area, but you also have um, a hell threat still with this. So you could have like a wind driven large hell kind of deal. So please take these series. These are all the way down to San Antonio, Austin. These could eventually move into the college station region, you know, right around any kind of dinner time activities. You'll know these are coming. The frequent lightning, the winds will pick up vivid lightning, and uh, you'll certainly see a gigantic shelf cloud, which is associated with an intense line of storms. And these will sweep through. And I think that what makes this different than what happened two days ago is I really think this line of storms will lose some steam by the time you get into late in the evening. So, you know, by the time you get to, I would say, um, just maybe just southeast of College Station and uh, just uh, or maybe even around the College Station, I think these storms will weaken substantially. Couldn't remain pretty intense down here in South Texas, though. So, you know, if you're down here south of San Antonio, um, any kind of small towns or communities down here, please take these storms serious because this could, it could be more of a late, kind of late evening event for you guys. And then these storms begin, the energy begins to kind of trail off into the northwest Gulf of Mexico. So please take these serious today. Um, you know, the significant tornado parameter, like I said, you can actually see the triple point that builds into this region early in the midway afternoon where the significant tornado parameter spikes. Remember, just because you see like a 10 in this region or a 9, that does not mean that there's a 100% or a 90% chance of a tornado. It just means the ingredients are there. That You know, you still have to get the updraft to produce a tornado. It means the ingredients are there in the atmosphere. You know, even, even a, an STP reading of a 1 or a 2, means that the environment is supported for tornadic activity. Um, so watch it early on. If there's going to be a tornado, I would venture to say it's going to be early to mid, maybe late-ish afternoon. Uh, and I would say it would be just west of the Dallas-Fort Worth area or just southwest, something like that. But please take this serious. Um, and please have a way to protect your cars if possible. Not everybody has the luxury of a garage or a carport, but... You know, if you have a neighbor and they got extra space or heck, I mean, just, I don't know. I know if I lived out here and there was big time hell, I would do everything I could to protect my property. <laughs> I would go to extreme measures like driving to uh, 10, 10, 15 miles and find me a carport. But um, I did drive up to Uptown Columbia here locally and, and park it under a carport or something. But um, anyways, um, but a more broader look at the South Central U.S., there will be more rain for Oklahoma. You guys have definitely picked up a lot of rain, and we're not we're not mentioning the severe weather threat just because we just did. But you could get an area, maybe some storm activity, but an area of heavy rain that moves into uh, western Arkansas later this evening, and then it just could be a rainy overnight hours um, tonight into a tomorrow morning. It's certainly Little Rock could wake up to some storms. It's certainly possible and some rainy conditions in this region. Some rain will kind of enter the southwest portions of Louisiana. The southeast today, um, not a big severe weather threat. A lot of overnight rains, you know, has since starting to move into the Washington, D.C. The Delmarva region already has. It's clearing out North Carolina. But as we get into this afternoon, we could get some a nice day. The sun could finally come out for some of these areas. Big time warming, but 
you know, anywhere from central to eastern Tennessee, uh, you know, north Georgia, maybe even the northwest portion of North Carolina, I'm sorry, of South Carolina, Piedmont, North Carolina. Uh, early afternoon, just after lunchtime, convection can really get going in this region. Could say it has some stronger storms, you know, into southwest Virginia, um, northwest North Carolina. You know, you can't rule out some of these storms spinning, especially with these little microclimates right up to the foothills where you have a big jump up in elevation, elevation change. Um, there, there's a theory that this creates a spin to the atmosphere. So, you know, could not rule out, can't rule out a tornado warning or so up here. But we'll watch these storms as they get going. And, you know, some isolated storms could produce a lot of hail. You know, it could be a stormy evening for the Raleigh area and along the Virginia North Carolina border. It could have some storms in the low country of South Carolina. These could be more widespread than what they're showing, or they might not be as widespread. So I do want to mention another piece of energy. Back it up a little bit. And this is, you know, we're starting it off this morning again. Don't want to leave you folks out in Florida. A little piece of energy will try to spark a big piece of energy that's into in the northeast Gulf of Mexico. And this will ride over north Florida today where we could have another complex of storms that produces large hail, maybe even isolated tornado threats today. Watch out Jacksonville, um, the northeast coastline of Florida, St. Augustine, places like that could have some big storms early midway this afternoon. And then some of these storms could refire up down the coastline and then maybe another complex area of storms could move into the Tampa Bay area and surrounding communities a little bit later this evening could be a stormy evening. But then by the time you get into the overnight hours, pretty much done with it. A little bit closer look at the Carolinas. Like I said, these storms will will fire up in the southern Appalachian Mountains. I think the mountainous areas could stand the best chance for some afternoon showers and storms. But like I said, you know, these areas right in here, like this little cell just um, east of Raleigh, this could produce hail. You know, any of these cells can. There's some cold air aloft. So, you know, don't be surprised if you get under one of these storms and it starts hailing on you. Don't be surprised one bit. Mid-Atlantic, same kind of deal. A lot of heavy rain. Um, you know, you'll, you'll be dealing with heavy rain in Washington, D.C. area and Baltimore area throughout the entire day. It might let up some, but I would watch out, you know, here. And central to southeast Ohio, some of these storms could be intense, gusty winds, small hail, lots of hail could fall in some of these storms. So don't let these catch you off guard this afternoon if you start to get the hail on. Um, you know, it's it's definitely possible to likely with some of these storms. The rest of the northeast, big area of rain will continue to surge in or really take over the state of Pennsylvania by the time we get into early this afternoon. This is riding into southern, taking over the southern half, pretty much the entire state of new jersey by the time we get into this evening and this begins to move into the southern tier i would say sometime later this afternoon it'll move in kind of from the southwest and work its way northeast starts to take over the finger lakes region this evening uh, starts to rain in probably the new york city region probably sometime around rush hour you know, the rain will start to pick up and you know this will kind of diminish somewhat but it'll definitely be a rainy overnight hours um for the state of new york it probably will not quite reach the northern portions of New York State by the time you're waking up tomorrow morning, but it'll be heading your way. Can't roll out some wet snow in some of these higher elevations in the mountainous regions of the northeast for sure, but you're definitely going to wake up to another rainy morning tomorrow morning in the New York City area. Rain between now and the next 24 hours. I mean, Virginia, you guys could get, especially the northern portions of Virginia, two to three inches of rain as possible. Some of this has already fell. But, you know, it's it's going to continue to be a pretty rainy Saturday for you guys. I'm sorry, Friday for you guys. A lot of rain's possible also in the southern sections of Pennsylvania. And then you go a little bit, you know, further north. But this is just rainfall between now and tomorrow morning. But rain, accumulating rain is beginning to, you know, add up somewhat here where, you know, a few hundreds of an inch of rain is possible to as much as a quarter inch of rain between now. And like I said, most of this will fall tonight the further north you get. North central U.S., kind of a weird setup. You're going to have kind of a developing low pressure, but you're dealing with some rain out there this morning in Minnesota. More rain will kind of move into the western sections of Iowa. And then rain, I think, will be on an increase, but it's kind of a narrow corridor of rain. So this is around 9 p.m. this evening. It's raining and anywhere from, you know, a small section of northern Missouri through the heart of Iowa, uh, southeast Minnesota, all the way into the western to northwestern sections 
of Wisconsin. And then, you know, just with nighttime coming, you know, some of this could mix with some snow in far northern Wisconsin. Don't be surprised one bit. You get a dusting up here. But uh, this rain just kind of goes over the same areas. And then by the time you get into tomorrow morning, it starts to shift a little bit further east into Wisconsin. And then another big, it's kind of a weird directional flow, honestly. Uh, the flow of the moisture kind of shifts. And then you get some rain that actually moves in from kind of like the uh, south, southeast, if you will. So it's pretty wild. But it could be a, a, a rainy day, snowy day for some tomorrow, but not expecting much snow at all. Uh, temperatures today. Pretty warm across the south. Some areas in North Carolina and South Carolina have been stuck in the 50s. It's been rainy. It's been dreary. Um, it's, it's pretty wild here. I can speak in the Carolinas. Certain areas of the Carolinas have just gotten nonstop rain and drizzly conditions. But in my neck of the woods, we haven't gotten a lot of rain. We got a good bit of rain last night, about three-fourths of an inch of rain. But it's been pretty wild. There's been just kind of a difference in weather and a very short am amount of space, <laughs> a very short um, amount of area, if you will. But pretty warm day. Uh, in fact, Wisconsin will be an interesting state where snow could start to fall a little bit later tonight. But most of the state, all the way into the UP and Michigan, will warm you know, into the 60s. There'll be a, maybe a 70 degree reading or two in Wisconsin, maybe the UP today. But if you're bordering you know, Lake Superior, you're going to get a little bit more cold air. But 80s in the south, 70s, very warm, deep, deep in, in Texas. And then you see where this boundary is with this upper trough swinging through. And there'll be a boundary between very cool air and then warm air setting up across the plains in the Midwest today. Maybe some 60s in Maine today. So you're getting some nice warmer weather, but rain cool air right here in the Mid-Atlantic because of the rain. Tomorrow, chances of severe weather have increased. You got a slight risk of severe storms down here in the panhandle of Florida, far southern sections of Georgia. So that is a 5% risk of a tornado. Okay, so we'll talk about this a little bit later tonight, and we'll try to figure this out for you guys. But it has increased. The severe weather threat has increased. And then Sunday is a day to watch. We're going to continue to figure it out. Honestly, I've not looked at the latest European to see what it's saying or the GFS, but Sunday is a day to watch. There's a marginal risk for the eastern Carolinas, southeast Virginia, and Florida. We'll see what happens with this. It's be a tricky day to figure out. So that's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all and have a great Friday.